From wonky investments to wasted dollars, there are definitely some Disney money-saving tips that you hear all the time that can absolutely backfire on you. So here on DFB Guide today, we're going to help you avoid that peril. Here we go. Hey everybody, it's AJ from Disney Food Blog and we have money saving tips for you all the time here on DFB Guide. But remember, there are some sneaky ways that those tips can fail you if you're not implementing them correctly. So we wanted to make sure you guys had all the news and updates you need to make sure that your investments are working for you when it comes to saving Disney dollars. First up, the Disney Dining Plan. Now this is a way to prepay for your food in Walt Disney World and you add it onto one of your Disney room stays or packages. And the idea of having all your meals prepaid before your trip can be a huge weight off of your shoulders. You don't have to worry about pulling out your wallet all the time and you can just relax once you get there. But this one's difficult. Remember, Disney's not going to push a deal like this unless they know they're going to profit from it. So you're definitely going to wanna crunch those numbers. This is not a guaranteed money saving choice because sometimes the Disney dining plan will actually end up costing you more than if you paid for your food out of pocket. So there's several ways that this can happen. One of the most common ways is that the Disney dining plan may not be the best deal for vegetarians or light eaters. So vegetarian entrees are typically gonna be cheaper than the meat-based items on the menu. And you can bet Disney is using the average entree price to work out how much the Disney dining plan costs. Yep, they are going to see how much the average person eats in Disney World. They have all of that data and they're going to up it. They're going to make you pay for the Disney dining plan a higher level than what the average person is going to eat so that they're going to make more money. That's just how business works. So unless you're ready to eat all of that food that's on the Disney dining plan, it may not be the best deal for you. Plus, portions are huge in Disney World and the standard Disney dining plan includes dessert with your table service meals along with a specialty beverage. So if you don't often order dessert or a glass of wine or alcohol with dinner or your counter service lunch, then you're gonna be leaving money on the table unless you're ordering those really expensive entrees and using every last snack credit with some great valued snacks. So there's lots of ways to lose money on the Disney dining plan. Disney makes sure of that. So our DFB guide to Walt Disney World Dining, as you guys know, has some great sample price breakdowns with estimated costs for each meal for a family of four for a week trip. That can really help you decide if the Disney dining plan is going to suit your family or if maybe you're gonna be spending too much for the dining plan and instead wanna pay out of pocket. So if you do decide that the Disney dining plan is too much food for your family and you probably won't spend that much if you pay for your food out of pocket, you can use other discounts Discounts to save money on food. There are restaurant loyalty programs and affinity group discounts that offer some great money saving options. And bringing your own snacks, having a light breakfast in the room, and other tips that we've offered here on DFB Guide and in the DFB Guide to Walt Disney World Dining ebook will really, really help out when you're trying to save some cash on your dining. Okay, so let's take Disney Dining Plan one step further and talk about the free dining offer. Now, this is an offer that Disney puts out about once a year where you can get a free dining plan with your room and tickets Disney World package. So we often say that free dining is usually a good deal, which for us, it usually is. But you've still gotta crunch those numbers because this money saving tip can also backfire. You will end up paying full price for your room. Don't forget that. So when you're crunching those numbers, remember that you're not gonna get any annual pass holder discounts or any of the other discounts that Disney's running right now on hotel room deals. Also, that package is going to require you to purchase a park hopper ticket and if you aren't already planning on getting park hoppers or if you have an annual pass already, then the free dining money saving may not balance out for you. And remember, room only discounts can be a better deal even if free dining is offered. So oftentimes during the slower season, January, February, also when free dining was offered in 2019 and when it's being offered for UK residents in 2020, you can score some really great room only discounts up to 35 or 40% off at some deluxe resorts. So check those room only discounts, make sure that those are not gonna give your family a better deal than a free dining discount, which includes full rack rate room and park hopper tickets for everybody in the room. You wanna make sure that room only discount isn't gonna be a better deal for you. Now other packages that look great on the front may not be so great when you look into them. So other special room offers sometimes require preferred room locations and those costs can add up. For example, there's a summer quick service special right now that requires a preferred room, but the deal may not be worth it for one quick service meal per day if that preferred room is gonna cost you more than a regular hotel room would if you weren't on the package. 
or if there's only one person in the room. Now, here's another little room issue that you're gonna have to watch out for. If you decide to wait to book your vacation for free dining or room discounts to be released, you might miss out on the room you really wanted, or the deal never comes around. Disney's pretty unpredictable these days. With Galaxy's Edge, a whole bunch of new rides opening, you never really know when they're gonna release those deals, even if historically they've released them on a specific date. So if you're hoping for a free dining deal, know that they release deals about four to six months ahead of when the stay window opens. So you might wanna book that room you really want and then wait to hear about the package deals. Once you hear about the package deals, you can always cancel and rebook or apply the new discount to the room you've already booked. So go ahead and book a room ahead of time, get the one you want, and then see if you're able to apply the discount to that package. All right, next money-saving tip that can backfire is splitting your meals. So if you're paying out of pocket and looking at prices, it might be tempting to split meals. And we often recommend doing this as something that can save you money and still fill up your family. But be sure that the portions are large enough. There's no point in splitting if your crew is hungry two hours later. You know on DFB, Disney Food Blog, we always put pictures of the food so you can see how large the portions are. And if you have some adults who are light eaters in your group, try ordering a kid's meal from quick service locations. These are smaller portions and prices, plus they come with a drink and usually a side dish as well. Now, if you're traveling with some super hungry kids and using the Disney dining plan, the kids and adults quick services are the same, which means kiddos can order items from the adult menu and get a much larger portion or split it between two kids and get double the credits. Now, some things are totally splittable and sharing is definitely encouraged, like the pizzas at Via Napoli. Those are $29 to $45 for a larger Mezzo Metro pizza that can serve up to four people. The Plaza Loaded Fries at Plaza Restaurant are $9 and they're huge. And Kitchen Sink Sunday at Beaches and Cream, this is $34 right now and serves four. So those are some good ideas of things to split that actually break down to cost a little less when you split them. And also, here's another tip you need to know. You can split meals at any quick service restaurant no problem because they're not going to follow you to your table and see if you're splitting it or not. And it's also no problem for an adult to order off the kids menu at a quick service restaurant. But remember that at table service restaurants, this tip can backfire. Some table service cast members will either not allow you to split a table service meal or may charge you extra for splitting a table service meal. So it may not be just the cost of the table service meal. Disney doesn't really have an official policy that we've seen on table service meal splitting. So it really is up to the cast member and the manager at that resort. And remember, if you are at an all-you-can-eat restaurant or a buffet, you absolutely cannot split one purchase between two people. If two people are dining there, two people will be charged. It is worth noting that kids two and under can share at an all-you-can-eat restaurant or buffet. Essentially, they can eat off your plate at those locations, but they get a drink as well. So don't worry about adding them to the Disney dining plan if you get it, but do add them to your dining reservation so you get seated at the correct size table and they get that drink. All right, the next money-saving tip that can backfire is the free water tip. Okay, so we're always telling you here on DFB about the free water around the park. Don't spend crazy high water bottle prices and definitely don't use your snack credits on water bottles, but you also might wanna know that some of those free water stations in the parks can taste pretty bad. Florida water, Orlando water specifically, sometimes has a weird flavor to it that some folks don't like. So little tip to make this one not backfire. Some folks here on our team bring water flavoring with them, which is definitely still cheaper than buying a bottle of water on property. But if you're trying to save some cash and you don't wanna drink flavored water all day, consider ordering groceries to your resort. Now you can order water bottles ahead of time and have them delivered to your resort by using several of the grocery delivery services. Just know that a $6 per box fee can apply to some deliveries at your hotel. So be sure to call concierge or talk to your front desk to see what costs may apply to getting that delivered. But still, 24 bottles of water, even with a $6 box fee, is still gonna cost you a lot less than 24 bottles of water in the Disney parks. Also, another great tip, if you use specific grocery delivery services like Amazon Fresh or Garden Grocer or Shipped, those services have a set delivery window and they're dropped at Bell Services who will refrigerate the items that need to be refrigerated and frozen. So if you order from one of those grocery delivery services, there's no box fee. They'll just go ahead and store that stuff until you call them to bring it up to your room. But please be sure to tip your Bell Services person. They really go to a lot of effort to make sure that refrigerated and frozen items are held appropriately and there's really no cost for that. So we definitely try to tip significantly because we know that a lot of effort goes into that. 
All right, the next money saving tip that can backfire is buying souvenirs ahead of time. It can be a great idea to buy souvenirs ahead of time for those little ones directly from the Disney store or from discount Disney outlets, where you'll find some of the same items that are sold in the parks. And the best part, you can get a discount on those things. DisneyStore.com is often running big sales on park specific merchandise. So just pack it in your suitcase and pull it out when you arrive. But kids are still going to request pricey in park souvenirs when you're there. So you'll likely end up spending to get those. So either let the little ones know that you have your souvenirs with you and they can get them at specific times when they're in the parks or let them know that they have a budget, $10, $15, whatever you want to make it for them to spend when they're in the parks and all other souvenirs are gonna be ones that were pre-purchased. Now, luckily there are some inexpensive options you can steer kids toward like pressed pennies or smaller stuffed animals, but be ready for them to ask for the $350 play sets or a $200 lightsaber and speak with them ahead of time about whether or not those are in your budget. And the last thing we wanna talk about, some Disney money saving options that may backfire on you are Disney investments, things like annual passes, Disney Vacation Club, or tables in Wonderland. And honestly, if we're gonna take this out to its extreme, even the popcorn buckets in the parks. Now these can all be a good investment if you use them. And there's plenty of great discounts and perks, but only if you take advantage of them. You really need to crunch those numbers to be sure you're going to use the investment because remember, you could be investing that money in something else that will grow your dollars faster. This is particularly the case with Disney Vacation Club. Now, let's talk about annual passes specifically here. The recent annual pass price hike means you need to visit the parks even more to break even. But if you're a local or semi-local, or even if you're planning two trips within a year of each other, you might be able to save using an annual pass rather than regular park tickets. So this also might mean you might be able to save a little bit if you purchase an annual pass rather than regular park tickets. But remember these specific tips. This also might mean you end up booking more last minute trips because you've got to get use out of that annual pass you bought. And this is Disney's business plan, by the way, for annual passes. You might end up spending a lot more on Disney hotels and food than you would have if you didn't have an annual pass. That thing burns a hole in your pocket and you really want to use it when you have it. So if you typically go to Disney World once a year, you might consider getting an annual pass and bumping up that second trip by a few weeks to get both trips in the same calendar year. Plus, you'll get Memory Maker, valuable discounts on food, merchandise, and hotel rooms, etc. And remember, only one person in your group needs to have the pass to get all of those discounts. You don't need to get annual passes for the whole family if you're not going to be able to do those two trips in the same year. And also remember, if you have an annual pass, you can also get a Tables in Wonderland card, which gives you 20% off food and beverage at table service and lounge locations around Disney World. Now, this can be a great discount opportunity but again, only if you really use it and understand how to use it. So the card costs Florida residents $175 and annual pass holders and DVC members $150. So Florida residents would need to spend $875 and annual pass holder DVC members $750 on food in a calendar year with the card in order to break even. So there are just a few of those ways that all of those money-saving tips for Disney World can backfire. So be sure to look at those before you make those choices and before you lay out your dollars. Again, there's so much to plan for Disney World. There's so much to figure out before you go to make sure you're getting the biggest bang for your buck. We always try to help you here on DFB Guide with our videos. We also have plenty of blog posts and information over on Disney Food Blog. And of course, we've got our DFB Guide to Walt Disney World Dining and to all the Walt Disney World World Parks when it comes to snacks over there on dfbstore.com. So be sure to use code YouTube if you pick up a book over in our store. Thank you so much for your support of DFB. We hope this has been helpful for you guys who are planning your trips and let us know in the comments your tips and your extra information too. We love learning from you. This is AJ for Disney Food Blog and we'll see you real soon.